Oh, hello. I didn't hear you come in. I was just reading this book that I wrote. It's called A Brief History of Pickles. It's about these cucumbers that keep all the pickle juice just for themselves, so they're the only ones that get to pickle. And that doesn't sit too well with our hero, the pepper. So she decides to... Well, why don't you just take a listen for yourself? A Brief History of Pickles by Mr. Schmidt Before the humans built great nations, before the sea filled with crustaceans, at the beginning of Earth's rotation, pickles ruled creation. Noble and powerful kosher dill, bread and butter stronger still, Sweet hot pickles reigned until some other veggies had their fill. It all started with a pepper, who always dreamed of something better than hanging around enduring weather, while the cucumbers all pickled together. Pepper had a plan but needed assistance. She picked herself and went a great distance recruiting food to join the resistance and wipe every cucumber from existence. She insisted to the fruits it wasn't fair. A cucumber gets pickled but not a pear. While fruits of all kinds dry out everywhere, cukes keep the brine and never share. She talked to all kinds of vegetables too. Her plea was passionate, strong, and true. Our time to pickle is long overdue. Don't we all deserve the juice? Aren't we such a sorry bunch, rejected every day at lunch, while the cucumbers get to bring the punch and that satisfying pickle crunch? The peas were sympathetic, but they said no. So did carrot, corn, and potato. They urged Pepper to let it go, just be fine with the status quo. But some were listening to Pepper's remarks, and in them deep down there lit a spark. No longer would they stay in the dark. Pepper's message had hit its mark. Beets and Onion both felt sore, and joined Pepper to settle the score. The greedy cukes could rule no more. The other veggies were ready for war. A fierce and epic war ensued between the different types of food. It was sweet hot the beets pursued while onion battled dill in the feud. In the end, bread and butter held the line, but the mighty Pepper would not resign. She pushed and slashed and fought so fine and stole the cucumbers' jars of brine. The great pickle battle was completed. The cucumbers had been defeated. Just as Sweet Hot and Dill conceded, bread and butter begged and pleaded. Okay, fine, we admit it, you've beat us. But is this really how you have to treat us? The truth, if you could keep it between us, is if we weren't pickled, no one would eat us. They had to admit that this was true. Plain cucumbers were disgusting, they knew. So Pepper came up with an idea all new. Would you like to pickle with us too? So a new friendship had begun with every plant under the sun. No longer would cucumbers have all the fun. From then on, pickling was for everyone. Wow, what an exhilarating story of friendship and redemption. I know I cried at least 114 times. This week we're going to talk about a big word starts with a P. It's called 
personification. And personification is when we give things that aren't human, human characteristics, like the ability to talk or move around or think or things like that. In this story, all the vegetables are personified, meaning the pickles and the peppers don't behave like normal pickles and peppers in the real world. I gave them eyes and mouths and hands and swords and the problems to solve. And for your project today, I want you to personify something. So think of something that is not a person, and it could be anything from an animal to a yo-yo, and give it people features like eyes and legs and hands and arms and that sort of thing. But I also want you to take it one step further than that. So draw anything you want, but think about what that thing would do if it could walk and talk and see. So I thought if a pepper could walk and talk and move around, what might it do? So I wrote a brief history of pickles about that. So if you want to draw a dog, think about what that dog would say if it could talk. If you want to draw like a piece of pizza, what might that piece of pizza do or say? So add those things as clues in your artwork, things like details in your background of your picture so that we have a sense of what your thing is trying to do just by looking at it without you telling us what it is. One more time, what you'll do today, draw something that is not a human and personify it, which means add human details like eyes or a mouth or maybe some legs and add details to your drawing that give us clues about what your thing is doing. The things you'll need, a piece of paper and something to draw and color with. So let's take a closer look at one of the drawings that I did for a brief history of pickles. I drew a pepper and I thought about what she might be thinking about or wanting to do. So I added the details with the pickled cucumbers so you might have an idea of what's going on in the pepper's brain if she were to have a brain. A couple of things to think about. What does that thing that you drew want to do? Why would it want to do that? And how can you show both of those things in your drawing? Okay, everybody, that's it. Have fun. Be safe, and I will see you guys on the flip side.